All right, welcome to 2.2. Nice to have you with me here. And it seems like it's been a while since we've done these. We are looking at how to analyze conditional statements and what that has to do with a mariachi band. <laughs> I have no idea. But if you have your textbook alongside of you, that'd be helpful. <clears throat> so our essential question, how do I write definitions as conditional statements. And now this first part here is uh, actually from 2.1, but let me squeeze it in because it's very important terminology. A conjecture is an unproven statement that is based on observation. So it's not a fact, it's not a proven fact, and nor is it an opinion. Opinion is just something we spout out what we think, oh, I think this is true. A conjecture is a more formal presentation of something that we believe is true based on observation but we have not yet proven it to be true and uh, typically when we uh, make a conjecture we make it based on inductive reasoning and we use inductive reasoning when we find a pattern in specific cases and then write a conjecture for the general case. So I'm observing this case, this case, this case. Hey, I see, I think I see a pattern that's happening here. And so from that pattern, I create um, a conjecture. And using, looking at specific cases and trying to find a pattern uh, from that to create conjectures, that process is called inductive reasoning. And then part of uh, proving whether or not a conjecture is true is seeking to find a counter example. That is a specific case for which the conjecture is false. In other words, if you have a conjecture and you cannot find a counter example, then it seems as if that conjecture may be true. So for example, the uh, conjecture might be that all uh, tall people are really bad at math. Uh, and that may be generally true, but hopefully I am a counter example. I'm tall and I'm not really good at math, but I'm reasonable. At least I'm not bad uh, at math. So I would be a counter example to that conjecture. Now a conditional statement is a logical statement that has two parts to it. It has a hypothesis and a conclusion. And when a conditional statement is written in the if-then form, the if part contains the hypothesis and the then part contains the conclusion. So I've given this little diagram here. For example, the statement, this is a conditional statement, this entire thing here. If it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky. Or maybe somebody is shooting a... Uh, a hose over at you, but then it can, then again it would not be raining. So if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky. This is a conditional statement that's written in the if-then format. And this part after the if is the hypothesis. So it is raining is the hypothesis. And the part after the then is the conclusion. So if hypothesis then conclusion. Remember that little phrase, if hypothesis, then conclusion. So for example, here is a conditional statement. If the measure of angle A is equal to 99 degrees, then angle A is obtuse. Okay, so the, what's in the uh, green, that is the hypothesis. And what is in the pink, that is in the that is the conclusion. So you'll see down here at the bottom <clears throat> of your notes, your responsibility now is to rewrite, rewrite the conditional statement in an if-then format. So here's example one of a way to do that. Uh, all birds have feathers. So this is a conditional statement, and let's write that into the if-then form. All birds have feathers. 
So a way of writing that into the if then, if an animal is a bird, would be one way to say it, or if it is a bird, if an animal is a bird, then it has feathers. So I've taken this statement and I've put it into the if then format. And you know that if hypothesis, then conclusion. So what's in the red is your hypothesis. What is in the blue is your conclusion. Here's another statement. Two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. Two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. Remember a linear pair looks like this. It's a line. So if these two are a linear pair, then they are um, well, actually, <laughs> um, two angles are supplementary if they are a linear pair. And a way to say put that into the if-then format or form is what I just started to do to say if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So um, again, if hypothesis, then conclusion, and you can see the way it was written before. You actually said the conclusion first and then the hypothesis after that. So go ahead and pause the video now and take each of these sentences. These are conditional sentences, but then write them into the if then format. So of course your first word here is going to be if, if what, then what. And do that for each of these uh, four. <clears throat> Okay, now that you have that done, let's look at what you can do with these conditional statements. Now that you put it into the simple conditional if-then form, we can do some things with it. We can negate it. Uh, and the negation of a statement does not have to be a conditional statement, but just a, any statement, the negation of it, is the opposite. <clears throat> so when you think of negate, you could think of a, a negative and uh, meaning you want to put it into the opposite. So it's not a direct parallel there, um, but negation is to make the opposite of the original statement. For example, if you said the color is not blue, a negation of that statement would be the color is blue. So you're the opposite of what the original statement was. Converse, this is with a conditional statement. The converse of a conditional statement, you switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. When you think of converse, you probably think of sneakers. So think of switching your sneakers, okay? Converse means to switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. Inverse means to negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So inverse, you are negating you're making it the opposite uh, for both the hypothesis and the conclusion. They're opposite of what they originally were. And then contrapositive is a particular kind of conditional statement that um, where you not only do the converse of it, but you also negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So you, you switch them and you also negate them. That's contrapositive. And then two statements are equivalent statements if both of those statements are true. So for example, uh, the one statement, a conditional statement written in the if-then form, if two lines intersect to form a right angle, so here are two lines and let's say they're intersecting to create a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. Now I can take the converse of that, I can switch that and say if they are perpendicular lines, then the two lines intersect to form right angles. Okay, And the converse is also true, isn't it? So both the, in this particular case, both the original conditional statement and the converse are equivalent statements. They are both true. A biconditional statement <clears throat> is a statement that contains the phrase if and only if. Now I know I'm flying through this stuff, but uh, maybe listen to the video again or, or pause the video and think it through yourself. Read this on your own. 
but a biconditional statement is a statement that contains the phrase if and only if. So you're looking for that phrase, and if you see that phrase, it's definitely a biconditional statement. So you now, or just in a minute here, will need to take this statement and uh, do the converse of it, create the converse of it, and the inverse of it, and the contrapositive of it. So let me help you get ready for that. On the side of your notes here, you'll see a conditional statement. If the measure of angle A equals 99 degrees, then angle A is obtuse. Remember that? The converse of that, converse means switch. Converse means switch. So we switch. We take this conclusion and we make it the hypothesis. And we take the hypothesis, we make it the conclusion. And the inverse is to negate it. So notice what we've done. We've kept the same order. Hypothesis stays as the hypothesis, but we negate it. Before it used to say equal. Now we put does not equal. And it used to say is obtuse. Now we say is not obtuse. So we have taken the inverse of that conditional statement by negating. We've negated this first phrase, and we've also negated the second phrase. We've negated the hypothesis, and we've negated the conclusion. And then contrapositive is doing both converse and inverse. So you take the do the converse by switching it, and then not only do you switch it, but you also negate both of those. So you have the not and the is not equal to with those. Okay, you're ready to, uh, uh, I was going to say sail on your own or fly on your own. So flip over the page of your notes there and write the converse. So your conditional statement is if a dog is a Great Dane. So that's your hypothesis. Dog is a Great Dane. And then it is large. So write the conclusion. So if hypothesis, then conclusion. So, so write the inverse. I'm sorry, write the converse. So your converse is going to be if the dog is, or a dog, if a dog is large, then what? What would be the remaining part of that converse. And then also tell me whether that statement is true or false. So over here, or maybe on the left hand side, wherever you want to do it, uh, write whether or not that converse is true. Or the un and then also tell me whether the inverse is true and whether the contrapositive is true. Okay, hope that's helpful to you. We'll see you soon in class.